Well, welcome back to another thrilling edition of 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. And today we're going to talk about a movie that I would consider jinxed to me, anyway. It was a jinx to me. Uh, back in 1972, I saw this film called The Culpepper Cattle Company, which was about a cattle drive headed by Billy Green Bush, and a young Gary Grimes wants to be on the drive. And basically, he is hired, but there's some kind of weird-ass thing going on with a, a rustler, and it's a group of rustlers read by, led by character actor Royal Dano. And uh, basically what happens is there's a shootout to get the cattle back, and Culpepper loses four men. So he sends young Gary out to recruit some old friends of his, Russ Caldwell. He tells him to go to this bar. Well, on the way to the bar, or whatever he was going, he stops to answer nature's call, and while he's doing that, two trappers show up and take everything he has. Of course, he doesn't even put up a fight. So he goes to the bar to find Russ Caldwell, played by Jeffrey Lewis, with his four friends, played by Lucas Hugh, Bo Hopkins, and Wayne Sutherland. So he tells them that basically Culpepper needs them and they're paying whatever and to come back. Well, on the way back, they come across the two trappers, one who is Paul Harper of the Wild Bunch fame, as he was one of the bounty hunters, and they kill him and give Gary back his shit. So they go in, and there's obviously history between uh, Russ and Culpepper, and he wants a little bit more than a dollar a day, but that's all he's going to get. So uh, Gary has to, has to play uh, watchman at night to watch the cattle company, and he's approached by this guy, a bandit, a one-eyed bandit, played by Gregory Sierra. And, of course, he's beat up, and, of course, Culpepper's pissed off, and they decide to go and find the, the, the rustlers. So they go to this bar, and they're not so sure until Gary sees the one-eyed guy in the back. Um, he's told to keep his gun on the bartender, who is a little bit hinky. Anyway, Russ and company blow all those people away, and Gary blows the bartender away who made a grab for the shotgun. So they continue this thing, and they wind up on this graze land owned by this crazy fucker who I forget his name is, who basically wants them off, um, takes their guns, and runs them out of town. Of course, Russ and company are pretty pissed off by that, and he keeps asking Frank to do something, but Frank ain't going to do something. So they keep on going, and they run into a bunch of holy rollers led by uh, another character actor, Anthony James. And they're going to squat on this land until this asshole comes up and basically tells them that if they're not gone, you know, in 24 hours, he's going to come back and kill them all. So Gary decides to stay with the religious folk and defend them. So the other four are halfway away when they decide, well, fuck it, like the Magnificent Seven deal, nobody takes our guns. So they grab guns from the other guys and go back there and prepare to make a stand. And it's one hell of a stand because if you think Bo Hopkins got shot up a lot in the Wild Bunch, you ain't seen nothing yet. All four of these guys eat it, get shot numerous amounts of times, and uh, the bit main, main bad guy, the landowner, is going to close in on Gary and blow him away when a wounded Lucas Q staggers to his feet and guts the guy in front of everybody. Now, the Anthony James character says the land is tainted and we can't settle here, we're going to move. And Gary Grimes basically says, you're going to bury my friends, which they do. And that leads to another downbeat 70s ending, as that's where the fade-out is. The reason I say this is a jinx film for me is, I bought a 16mm print off of eBay. And when I went to run it, all of the fucking violence was cut out. So, of course, I sent it back. Somebody else put up another used print of it up there. Well, I got that one. I never had a chance to run it because when I popped it open, I got the irresistible smell of vinegar syndrome, which means the film's deteriorating. And I had a big argument with the person who sold that to me because he basically was going to accuse me of switching fucking films, which I didn't. And finally, I got him to take that back. Well, I had a sealed DVD of Culpepper Cattle Company on my shelf, so I decided, well, fuck it all, I'm going to watch this one. And I put it in, and much to my chagrin, it didn't play. Only lately, because, you know, one of my Valentine's Day presents was the Culpepper Cattle Company uh, DVD for my girl Lorena, and I got to watch it and got to see all this good shit again. 
still holds up. It's still a good movie. It, you know, it might be a little bit too slow for a lot of people, but the end really kicks ass. So uh, definitely worth checking out the Culpeper Cattle Company from 1972 with a great, great cast of character actors in it. So that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. And a uh, big shout out to the guys at Fuse, the Fuse Box Show out there because they're still uh, helping me along with the website and stuff. And another big thank you to all the people who have purchased uh, the latest issue of Grindhouse Resurrection. Uh, we all appreciate that. And uh, like I said, you know, we're going to sit down after a while and figure out if we can keep this going or not. So until next time, stay safe and we'll catch you on the flip side.